hello everyone <clears throat> sorry uh, welcome to cg tutorials uh, we have already covered around 500 question 400 questions something in uh, our java series so now today uh, from today actually i'll start covering 20 questions instead of 10 because some of the questions are very easy to uh, describe so like if suppose we are talking about 10 questions a day uh, it's uh, like five questions are coming like in that picture so we are just now from today we'll cover 20 questions in this video and without further ado let's start in java what is the difference between throw and throws keyword so suppose when we want to raise an exception in our code right we will use throw in the and the name of uh, exception to be raised simply and suppose the throw and when the throws keyword is used it is used in the method declaration Throws keyword will actually tells us that the exception can be thrown by this method. Any caller of this method should be prepared to accept, uh, expect this method exception. Another minor difference is that uh, the throw here, right? The throw it is used only with one exception, but throws can be used with a kind of comma separated list of multiple exceptions. Same, same like implements and extend kind of a feature, right? You can think about uh, throw as extend. It can only extend one uh, thing. And you can throw about, uh, you can think about uh, uh, throws as an interface. I mean, it's very bad, but yeah, kind of a thing to remember for. And what happens to the exception object after the exception handling is done? So once the exception handling is complete, the exception object is not reachable. So it is what it, what it will do. If it's not reachable, if it's lying around, if the difference is back to null, what it will do? Garbage collection. How do you find which client machine is sending requests to your servlet in Java? So however, right now we are not using it. So, but the methods are get remote address or uh, to get the IP address and uh, get remote host to get the host name. Then what is the difference between a cookie and a session object in Java? So we know that both cookie and session, they are used during communication between client and server. So client can actually choose to disable a cookie due to which the web servers cannot send a cookie, uh, but a client cannot disable a session. So that is one of the objects. So session always works irrespectively of any setting at the client side. Also, a session can store any Java object, but the cookie can only store some information that is string information, like user ID, password, there's some field value and all those things, right? Which protocol does browser and servlet use to communicate with HTTP protocol? What is HTTP tunneling? So there are many communication protocols right on the internet, but the most popular is that uh, HTTP. HTTP tunneling is a technique where we uh, encapsulate the communication done by any other type of protocol, okay? So the masking of other protocol requests as HTTP request or HTTP uh, as request, we call it as HTTP tunneling. It's a simple example and you can understand. Why do we use JSP instead of servlet in Java? So JSP pages, right? They are dynamically compiled into servlets at the, at the last. The programmers can easily make updates to the presentation layer of the code for better performance. JSP pages can be pre-compiled. Also, JSP pages actually provides the flexibility to com combine the static templates like HTML or XML snippets. In addition, programmer can make logic ch uh, changes at the class level without editing the JSP pages that use the class logic. It's simple. JSP pages are dynamically compiled at the last two servlet. Uh, for better performance, we can actually pre-compile the JSP pages. JSP pages gives us more flexibility to combine the static templates like HTML and uh, XML. And uh, uh, programmers can make logic changes at the class level code without reading the JSP pages, right? So is an empty .java file name a valid source file name in Java? Yes, you can create it. You can try it yourself. Oh, that is not true. Uh, how do you implement servlet chaining in Java? 
like like constructor chaining and all those things servlet chaining has to be implemented when we have one or more servlet so the output of one servlet has to be sent to a second servlet the output of the second servlet has to be sent to a third servlet in this way we'll do it. the last servlet in the chain will be responsible for sending the final response to the client now can you instantiate this class public class a i don't think so right we need to have a main method and uh, it's in the reconstructor where uh, it will be, it will run the call the constructor uh, like because it is instantiating and doing that so that's not possible why java does not support operator overloading so you have heard about method overloading but does not uh, java does not support operator overloading right uh, it would make the design more complex by adding operator more overloading so this is one of the answer you can always give okay also it will make more complex compiler okay second of the answer you can give but the reason uh, uh, but the main reason is what i am doing man sorry but one more reason is uh each uh, it will uh, reduce the performance of jvm by operator overloading since uh, jvm has an extra work to find the real meaning of the overloaded operators at any run time now why string class is immutable or final in java it's a very good question you can always 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 uh, uh, ask this question in an interview and can be asked this question when you are giving an interview since string objects are cached in a string pool it makes sense to make string immutable because the cache string literals are shared between multiple clients and there is a possibility that one client's action may affect the other client's access to string pool a string is also used as a, as a parameter in many java classes example you can pass host name port number as string while operating a network connection if anyone can modify your copy of a string it can change the host name due to this reason it is sensible to make the string classes final now what is the difference between send redirect and forward method when you use send redirect right it will create a new request when you use a forward method it will just forward the message in case of send redirect the previous request scope objects are not available because it creates a new uh, request in case of forward they are available now send redirect is considered slower than the forward method how do you fix your serializable class if it contains a member that is not serializable if you want to make a class serializable but find that the class is a uh, class contains member that are not serializable right then you have to mark those members as transient we have already discussed about it. okay this will ensure that a member is not persisted in the stream of byte therefore transient keyword is the best form of thing where you can make anything anything as in a non compulsion optional uh, while trans, uh, transferring it into a stream of bytes to a rest resource into a database connections it was sql operations anything what is the use of runtime polymorphism in java so during the runtime right the behavior of an object can change based on the runtime status so due to this runtime polymorphism is used if you override a method in a child class then you are providing a runtime polymorphism nothing will happen at the compile time because they both are like different different things right but at the runtime jvm will decide which method will we call on the basis of the class object what are the rules of method overloading and method overriding in java so when we want to overload a method we want to make sure that the method name remains the same but the method signature can vary in number or data type of arguments or in the order of arguments so basically void foo int a int b void 
foo int b int a can be done, but void bar int a, a int b cannot be done. But when we are overriding a method, we have to ensure the method is not throwing any checked exceptions that are new or higher than those declared by the overridden method. We want to make sure that the method name, arguments, and return type all remains the same. Okay. In overloading, we can do anything. Name should be same. Even so, everything name should be same. Return type should be the same. Meta signature can vary number, data of argument, argument. But we have to make sure that the name should be same in overloading. Okay. But in overriding, but in overriding, we ensure that the method. is not throwing any checked exceptions. And it can throw, but it can only throw what has been declared in the parent class or a parent method. And it can also throw a lower level of checked exception. If suppose uh, the exception in the parent one has a higher hierarchy or a higher level, so it can throw a lower level of it but they cannot throw the higher level of it. Also, it cannot throw the other way. If you cannot throw arithmetic and input output exception at the same time. Now you cannot, you cannot, you cannot override static and final methods. Static method, if you are overriding, you will not override. You will just create, you will just create a method, same thing. It will act as a method hiding, but not over. Method uh, over writing, okay. <clears throat> Sorry for this. I have very sore throat today. What is the difference between a class and an object in Java? See, a class is a class, object is an object, okay. It is not the good expression. A class is something where you say a uh, mammal can be a class, right? A uh, boy uh, can be a class, okay. So a uh, boy will have uh, a, cl a class boy is there. It will have certain things. But I think a mammal can be a good thing. A boy can extend some mammal. Okay, that will be a better thing. So a class is a template. A boy is a template. Mammal is a template. Now object. Mammal can be of different things. Different mammal are there. So they can use the mammal class and have the a uh, particular definition of that mammal class. This mammal is called this, this mammal has four legs, this mammal lives here, this mammal is this. So this is what an object does. So object populates the value of the member variables, class will define what it has. Okay, therefore, a class is a blueprint that you can use to create objects. Okay. Uh, can we create an abstract class that extends another abstract class, definitely. Uh, but uh, only the last non-abstract class will actually have to define the methods of a parent class, okay? Uh, now, what do you mean by upcasting and downcasting? So when we know we want to class, cast a subclass to superclass, we call it as upcast, other way, downcasting well uh, so going up is like widening it also called as upcasting and narrowing is called as downcasting at many times downcasting can throw the class cast exception if it fails the type check right i think list of substitution principle also comes here your subclass should be able to handle everything what a super class does so you can take that what is the reason to organize classes and interfaces in a package in Java? This is basically a uh, name suggests the package contains a package of classes. It helps in setting the category of a file, like whether it's a DAO class, whether it's a model class, it's a resource class, uh, it's service class and all those things, right? So it will prevent the collision. You can keep it uh, there. I think uh, we have covered a lot of uh, topic here. I think we have to stop right now and uh, let's hope you like this 20 uh, questions. We'll move another 20 tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye, take care.